Hey everybody, it's David O'Neill and it's time for another episode of That Drone Show and today we're proud to have the team from International Drone Day's main event in El Paso, Texas where history was made on May 4th, uh, 2019. I've got the team captain and crew. I'm going to put it over to you guys from El Paso, Texas. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. So, David, I just want to introduce the uh, people that are here with me, my team. This is Carlos uh, uh, Marquez. This is Mike Toussaint. And behind me is uh, uh, Mike Garrett and uh, Chris, Chris, Chris Robinson. We, it, it, just a lot of things going on here, so my mind's going in different directions. But uh, what an event. Yeah, it looked like it. So... So I saw on Twitter there was a proclamation, there was flags flying, there was, I mean, so many people there, and I got nothing but good reports all around, and everybody was, you know, some people thought it was this weekend for some reason, and they wanted to go. So, I mean, what's yeah. what's it like out there? I mean, you, I know that you went through a mountain of stuff to get it done, and you had your whole team there, but kind of describe the day for us, and, and, and let us know what happened. Well, I'll let these guys speak, because I'm, this could have never happened with these guys that are uh, with me right now. And I told you that before. But one thing I wanted to do before these, uh, you guys go ahead and start talking. This is our uh, oh, res wow. resolution that was uh, signed by the judge. Wow. And the judge at the very, Ricardo. That's so cool. Here, he actually flew my drone, had a great time doing it. We got it all on film. But, uh, what, what I like to do is introduce uh, Carlos and let him talk a little bit. Then Mike and the guys behind us, if they want to say anything, is more than uh, welcome to do so. But we have so much to tell you. Uh, one thing I want to do before we go any further that we know what we're doing now. We had, we had some issues, we had some uh, obstacles to overcome, but we know what we're doing now. Next year, I will guarantee you, it'll be five times bigger. Wow. That's cool. We've already, start, we've already started planning. I bet. So, yeah, it's just like, you know, when, when you finish it, then you know all the things you want to do different, and then you've got to start planning again, and it's just exactly. every year. I mean, that's going to be number six. This was the fifth annual. Oh, it was a it was a great day. I mean, you guys really nailed it. I, I've done uh, three of these myself, and they're not easy at all, So especially the first time you do it. But I'll tell you what, when it was all over, it was like a sigh of relief, and it was an, uh, just an awesome feeling that we really got it accomplished. Yeah. Okay? But we had, we had so much support by not only the team put it together, but the uh, the government uh, entities that stepped up the plate to help us out. One of them was Anto Antonio uh, Navarro from the uh, International Airport. Yeah. The FAA. They, uh, they came down and supported us all the way. And it was every one of our pilots, before they were allowed to fly, we had them, because we was in class C airspace, so we had to file for air clearance. Every one of them had to download and uh, get their clearance. Before they could fly, they had to show us their, their, their clearance. They were tasked. Yeah. And they got a badge that they wore around their neck that they were an approved pilot to fly there. That's cool. They, the FAA thought that was Incredible. Well, yeah, you know, the first year that we did this, all the government agencies around the world, the FAA and the CAS and the UK and all these different groups and air transport, they put a warning out. They said some bunch of hobbyists are getting together on this day and we think there's going to be a lot of problems. That was the first year. And then we had, what, 85,000 people that year all over yes. the world, not one accident. And so now the FAA knows that these are responsible people coming out to show people how to fly drones the right way so that you're not flying them into buildings, you're not being weird and reckless over the freeway, you're not doing strange things. So the FAA knows, like when we put these events on, that it's good to endorse it. And we had FAA endorsement all across the, the country. We had the CAS in, in the UK. We had people all over doing it. I mean, and the thing about International Drone Day is it should be called International People Day because it's really about the people coming together and like yeah we got drones but man you got to do so much cooperation you gotta you know even if you don't like someone that day i always say well just today you got to like him that day because you got to make this work because we're trying to show people how the drones work and we don't want to like you know yeah we just don't like certain people but that's okay like we're just getting together to show people how drones work and there's not many 
there's lots of hobbies, you know, train people, there's, there's people that make models, but there's not many groups besides ours in drones that actually get together on the whole world and cooperate with each other to show other people how to do it and show how to do it safe. There's not, not a lot of people can say that. So you guys are among the elite people that actually like will share your hobby and then you're actually doing something big. I mean, why don't you go around the room and just kind of like, I want to hear from each guy, like, what was it like being at International Drone Day, the main event, and what do you want to do next year? Go ahead. Hi, um, Carlos Marquez. Uh, we, we, we just had a great time. There was a lot of planning behind it, and um, but, but the, the, the support that we got from the community, everyone kind of coming together, the county of El Paso, uh, they, they uh, let us use a lot of their equipment. Um, you know, they it was just... Uh, a big collaboration that uh, we, we just we just loved and we learned a whole lot just just like Dan was saying and so we know that next year will definitely be better awesome and the back there who's who's next <laughs> you're good you're good uh, how are you doing? Um, I, I'll go ahead. go ahead hey I'm Mike so it was a great time and as Dan, Dan mentioned earlier we had a few pilots that came and they weren't familiar with filing for uh, airspace clearance, so we were able to help them, and everything was so organized. We even had blenders that we gave pilots, so we knew that they were already, uh, they already filed their airspace clearance. All and right. Views. So it, it pretty much was a great experience. It was new. We're much more experienced with doing this uh, next time. Yeah, these are the lanyards that we gave. Oh, that's pilot. so cool. Clearance. I love that. That's really nice. <laughs> They had to have one of these on before you could actually take off. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and and, and what, before we get any, uh, go any further, David, there's one other person I really wanted to introduce at this meet is Rodolfo uh, Ruby. Tell me name. Maldonado. Well, I, I wanted to make sure I got it right, but <laughs> right. he's from the uh, the uh, Deputy Regional Director of Southwest Border Patrol and Homeland okay. Security. They backed us 100%. Wow. Yeah, I mean, every from the colleges, from the El Paso Community College, uh, uh, Melissa Sanchez was there. Uh, we're holding a class for him starting June 6th on drone operations. Okay. And I'll, be, I'll be teaching that class, by the way. Uh, it, they had their booth set up there. And it, they are so excited about what we're doing for this community. We definitely made it history. Wow. I mean, seriously. Uh, uh, you guys want to say something? I mean, hey Mike here. Hey Mike. Uh, I was really surprised with the uh, support for the community, you know, especially being on a, on a border town and the things that happen between the borders. You know, I was just really surprised with the, uh, the support from the different agencies and how they, they're all on board having this international drill day. That's cool. Really cool. What do you want to see for next year? Uh, and now that, you know, this was the first International Drone Day we had in El Paso, we learned a lot from it, so uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be twice as, as good as it was this year. Nice. Uh, right. Who's next? Hey. Uh, oh, you're me. Uh, Chris Robinson. Um, I actually had a good time actually meeting with the FAA um, rep and actually talking to him about airspace and filing and how they track everything. And how they're how he explained to us that they're not out to get us, they're out to work with us. Yeah. So I actually thought that that was a pretty good one-on-one -on -one conversation that uh, me and him. Yeah. No. I mean, I remember when we were at um, the Consumer Electronics Show back in 2014. And I was with a couple of guys and, you know, drones weren't that big yet, but we were flying them and we saw some FAA guys. And my friend said, you should throw eggs at those guys. Those guys are horrible. And now... There's this cooperation, what is it, six years later, now there's this cooperation between the FAA and drone pilots that we could have never have dreamed of. And it's because right. of days, I mean, it's not only because of International Drone Day, it's because of responsible flying and people doing stuff, but International Drone Day has had a big effect on the way that the FAA looks at drone pilots because, I mean, let's be honest, like, it's fun to fly the drones, but we like to make money with these drones, right? I mean, and if we, if we can't get them to write laws that are good for us, then we can't do the kind of jobs that we could do. I mean, you, you could be making $100,000 a year if you play your cards right by being a drone operator, by you know doing inspections or camera work or real estate work or search and rescue work. There's so many opportunities for money and jobs and job growth. I mean, not just for us in the room, but for kids coming up through school and technology and repairs. But all that stuff has to be, you know, first be made legal. Because I remember in the dark days in 15, 16, it was rough. 
it was hard to be able to fly anywhere because all of a sudden I used to fly at a certain beach and then a bunch of drone issues happened like uh, on the media. Then all of a sudden I was a criminal. I was a bad guy after that. And so this really had to take place. And now I fly a drone. Like, oh, you're flying it safe. You got that registered. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's OK. Like now everybody knows. And it's it's because of this. I mean, it's it's really because of this this right here. Well, one of the things that the uh, air traffic controllers uh, they they were there they're also with their uh, mascot the red T. Oh yeah, so on. Yeah. Yeah, it was the is great. I even, I even had to make an apology to her because uh, it's a long story. I'm not going to get into it. But they were there, and one of their comments to everybody that filing an airspace clearance takes. Five minutes out of your time. Even if you're in G airspace, it really doesn't matter. And their comment was, we'd rather know you're there right. than not know. Yeah, and they, they are bending over backwards to work with us. No, and that's good. I mean, there's so many apps and there's so many things that you can look at on your phone and your device where if you don't know what airspace you are, you can check it and you can see where you are. And like, it is responsible to do that. Even if you're only going to go up 50 feet, you yeah. don't know if your drone's going to go out of control. I mean, I remember I had a drone one time and just went up and it didn't stop going up and then it finally came down. But, you know, just because you know what you're doing doesn't mean the drone's always going to do what it says it's going to do. We had that same experience at the uh, uh, fly-in. With uh, Chris yeah, Redbacker, drawing, okay. his went to 400 feet without his control. Yeah, it just flies. It was going up there and it went to, went to some weird home point. I'm like, where are you going? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, file, file for air clearance. It file for air clearance, yeah. yeah. So, no, that's cool. And, you know, yeah, I want to see if you guys have any advice because there's a lot of people after the fact that, oh, you know, I wanted to start a drone day, but I didn't know how. And I, I really wanted to do it, but I don't think I can do it. What kind of advice can you guys give other team captains? Because other people want to do this. Well, yeah, for myself, uh, like I said, on our last interview, it was an idea. I had seen you before. I was going to do it. Oh, this is right next to me and Mike. We got together one day and said we needed to find out. How we do this, we don't know, but we're going to do it anyway. And it all just comes together. You get yourself a good team that has the same goals, the same ideas you do, and uh, expecting the same outcome. It's easy. But uh, when drone day comes, it's a tough one because everything is starting to fall into place, and, and hopefully everything that you plan works out. And we were very fortunate to have a great team put together all work out. Awesome. Well, I just want to say on behalf of, uh, you know, that drone show and international drone day, you know, the founding people here really thank you for doing that. I know that all the, the people around the world always want to know what's going on with the main event and I'll be uh, putting up a big blog post and lots of social media and I want to get all your photos in so that we can show people because it is an inspiration that you did it. But the other thing is for the next year now, all the people that are going to be wanting to do it like you did it are going to be looking at this post, looking at your video. Uh, in fact, if they have any questions, where can they reach you? Go ahead, guys. Our, our website. Oh, our website? Our Facebook, Facebook page. Yeah, our Facebook page is called El Paso Drone Hive. Okay. And we also have a, a place where you can reach us at meetup.com. That's also called El Paso Drone Hive. Okay. And Cool. Yeah, I mean, I mean, essentially, if you just do the uh, hashtag El Paso Drone Hive, you're gonna you're gonna see all the social media platforms that we use. Okay. And so you, you, you can't miss us. Cool. I'll put it all down in the comments below here so that people can connect with you because they might have questions and of course they might even want to help out next year because you're planning on doing this again, right? Yeah, yes. well, absolutely. It's already started. <laughs> and our our email address is also El Paso Drone Hive at gmail.com. Okay. El Paso Drone Hive at gmail.com. So that way they can send emails to you and, and just, you know, be part of the movement. And, you know, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I know some guys, they do like half drone days where like six months later, they do another small meetup and they just kind of get together informally because why not? <laughs> we like flying. <laughs> so well, typically we usually hold a, a, a meetup for our group once a month. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah. we're always meeting up. Well, cool. I can't Everybody wait to come out there. We met so many really, really great pilots that are flying or our International Drone Day, and they all want to get together. And like I said, next year's going to be five times better because now everybody wants to get involved. Well, hopefully I can come out there next year. It'd be fun to go out to Texas and, and be part of it. That'd be really cool to be out there. 
we, we got an open door for you anytime you want to come out. Cool. All right. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we do a one, two, three, and on three we'll be do a big old drones are good. All right. Here we go. One, two, three. Drones, drones are good. good. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up, everybody. I'm David O'Neill. That's That Drone Show. Check out all the links below to support Team El Paso, Texas, and be part of International Drone Day. You can go to the main website, internationaldroneday.com. I'm David O'Neill, and we'll see you next time. Join us at internationaldroneday.com. Sign up to be a team captain. Find out how to become a sponsor.